Hello, I'm George Bartley from the Department of Ophthalmology at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Ophthalmology and medicine in general is rife with acronyms, and perhaps one of the most important would be the RUC. And we have the privilege today of visiting with a member of the RUC, Dr. George Williams, a vitreoretinal surgeon from Royal Oak, Michigan. Dr. Williams, what is the RUC? The RUC is a group that was formulated by the American Medical Association to represent the interest of physicians in the valuation of physician procedures. So it serves as an independent group that advises CMS on the relative value of virtually all procedures in medicine. The RUC meets three times a year and reviews CPT codes, either new or established CPT codes, and tries to determine a relativity which will assign a value that is consistent with other values within the CPT coding system. For some of our viewers, they may not know the three acronyms that you use in your excellent answer. What does the RUC stand for, CMS, and CPT? Perfect. Well, the RUC stands for the Relative Value Update Committee. So the R, the U, and the C. Uh, CMS is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And by statute, CMS is responsible for determining Medicare and Medicaid payments for all physician-based services. The importance of that payment system is that virtually all payers take their cue from the CMS-based payments. And CPT? CPT is the current procedural terminology. And CPT is uh, also a uh, copyrighted format by the American Medical Association. So CPT is the coding system that we use to describe the services that we provide to the government and to other payers. Now you're the only ophthalmologist member of the RUC, is that correct? Correct. The RUC has uh, tw 29 voting members and ophthalmology is a charter member of the RUC. We have a permanent seat on the RUC. The reason we have a permanent seat is because of the relatively large amount of Medicare and Medicaid services that ophthalmologists provide. So I have one vote as a member of the RUC in this process. But when you're at the RUC meeting, I assume that you're there with your ophthalmologist hat off. Is that correct? That's exactly right. So the RUC is, a, is an independent expert panel, and our charge is to try and come up with as fair a distribution of the fixed now fixed pie that is available for physician payment. So when I'm sitting at the table, I am not an advocate for ophthalmology, but rather I'm trying to use my best judgment to come up with the correct valuation for procedures. We are fortunate in ophthalmology in that we do have a very strong advocacy team, and that team is led by uh, Steve Kamenetsky, who is our RUC advisor. Uh, there is a RUC advisory committee, and Steve is a member of that, and he is the one who presents codes to the RUC for the valuation that we believe is appropriate. We're also very fortunate in ophthalmology to have an excellent uh, support system, which comes through the American Academy of Ophthalmology's DC office. Well, how has ophthalmology fared over the years through the RUC? Well, I think that if you look at the, the overall allocation of resources to ophthalmology, I, I think you would have to say that ophthalmology has been well served. This process began in 1992 with the advent of the relative uh, value system. That was the Shao study? That, is that correct? correct. So initially the Shao study was used to establish values and uh, uh, there are approximately 7,500 codes in the CPT. And over the now ensuing almost 20 years, the RUC has evaluated uh, nearly 5,000 of those codes to provide uh, recommendations to CMS. CMS does not always accept the RUC recommendation. Historically, the recommendations have been accepted about 90% of the time. 2011, however, was a, an interesting year for us because of some 
disagreements with CMS about procedural issues, CMS accepted only about 50% of the RUC recommendations. So it will remain to be seen whether or not um, we will have a, a greater acceptance of our recommendations in the future. Now was the RUC the group that uh, was responsible for um, dealing with the inequities in payment for intravitreal injections? Uh, a number of months ago. Is that your group or that team that, that Correct. Was, okay. Can you maybe summarize for us what happened in that? So, uh, as all ophthalmologists know, there's been an explosion in the use of intravitreal injections for what are fortunately very effective therapies for our patients. But whenever a code goes up substantially, it sets off a little bell somewhere in CMS and they start asking simple questions such as, why is this utilization going up? and uh, is there a valid clinical reason for it? Well, in our case, of course, there was a very valid clinical reason. We now were able to treat people that were previously untreatable. However, the economists in the federal government look at an increase in volume and say, well, there must be some efficiencies of scale that accrue to a an increased performance, and therefore the code should be revalued so that it uh, remains uh, fairly valued within the, uh, the relative system. The way that is looked at then is a, there is a survey that is sponsored by the American Academy of Ophthalmology that goes out to our members in a random basis. This survey is designed to assess the, the resources and the physician work that is required to perform a, a specific service, in this case intravitreal injections. Uh, once we have that survey data, then the Academy's RUC team reviews that data and, and we come up with a recommendation that is presented to the RUC uh, as a whole by Dr. Kamenetsky and occasionally we will have a, a supporting consultant sitting at the table for that presentation. The RUC then considers our data, looks at it within the context of relativity to other similar procedures and then either accepts or modifies our suggestions. In the case of intravitreal injections, unfortunately, they did not accept our arguments and the code was cut substantially more than we felt was warranted. There is an appeal process and we have, are still in the process of pursuing appeals. Uh, we will find out within the next several weeks, probably by the end of November 2011, whether or not our appeals were successful. Now you mentioned the surveys that uh, occasionally appear in the mailbox. This isn't spam. Doctors should take those pretty seriously if they get those. Is that right? It's absolutely critical that we have participation by the members of the Academy in these surveys. Um, and they should be filled out accurately and, and honestly. Otherwise, the system starts to break apart when, when people try to game the surveys. In the surveys, it, it's a well-constructed instrument. It is not trivial, though. It does take some time, and I think, unfortunately, people get into the survey and they realize that this is a significant time commitment and then they don't complete it. But I would certainly encourage everyone who has the opportunity to participate uh, to do so, because this is a direct input into payment for the respective services. What do you see for the RUCS work in 2012 and beyond? Well, for 2012, we're going to have a very busy year. Um, cataract codes are up for review again, and this is in response to a specific request by CMS to the RUC to revalue cataract surgery. In particular, there are questions about the relationship between the uh, 66984 code, the standard cataract operation, and the 66982, the complicated cataract operation. So we're actually in the process right now of sending out requests for surveys to the Academy membership. Clearly cataract is a major code for our field and so we'll see how that data turns out. Additionally, we've been requested to survey fluorescein angiography, which is another code that's performed uh, well over a million times a year. So we have our work cut out for us and we're hopeful that we'll be able to gather the appropriate data to defend the values of our codes. This sounds like an awful lot of work. This goes well beyond your expertise in vitreoretinal surgery and ophthalmology. You mentioned 7,500 codes. You just 
mentioned two. I bet you know the other ones by heart as well. Why do you do this, George? This is a lot of work. It can be a lot of work, and I, I do it primarily because I feel that it's important for phys physicians to be able to have significant input into this process. I'm very fortunate in that I have uh, an understanding wife. Um, perhaps just as importantly, I have very understanding partners who are able to cover my clinical load when I'm away performing these services. But it's certainly a team approach. Uh, a few years ago, the Academy recognized uh, the RUC team, and there's a host of individuals who over the course of the past 20 years have been absolutely critical to our RUC efforts. First of all, led by Bill Rich. Uh, Bill not only served as a RUC member, he served six years at the, as the chair of the RUC, which I think is a reflection of the uh, high degree of credibility he possesses and the level of respect that the House of Medicine has for Bill. Uh, additionally, Trex Topping spent a lot of time as a RUC representative. Greg Kwasny, I've already mentioned Steve Kamenetsky. And then we have a liaison process where we work directly with subspecialists through the respective societies and ask them to provide expert input into a variety of codes. So you're absolutely right. Uh, no one can be an expert in all these procedures and we need continuing input from the entire Academy membership in order to be able to uh, present the, the best possible position for our codes. Well, Dr. Williams, uh, on behalf of many, for our patients who the most important things we do in, is representing their, their best interests, on behalf of the Academy, thanks for all the work that you do as a member of the trustees, and thanks for spending time with us today. Appreciate it very much. My privilege. Thanks, thanks. George.